Okay, I do hope that I am live. I think I am. Oh, all right, BC, you already got a message to me in the live chat, but it shows zero watching. Odd. And I've got messages from Hunter and from FEMA inmate, which have been sitting in there for hours and I wasn't even live so very odd also another thing uh, when I set the schedule up I told it it would be at six o'clock yep now there's three here I set it up to go for six o'clock and when I looked later on when it was supposed to start in like a half an hour it said the stream will begin in two hours hi Marlin how are you doing I have a pretty mouth, huh? Okay, a little deliverance going on here. Anyway, she, now I'm off track. Uh, so I had to go through, I had to go down and reset the time zone. So I don't know, apparently people are here. I don't know if you saw the uh, little thing that went out to tell told you when I was going to be on or not, but here we are now. So... If somebody comes in at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock and gets to the end of this or it's already over and they just have to come back and watch it uh, after it's been recorded and they can understand why it wasn't there when they said it was going to be there. Let me do a little uh, technical stuff here. So today I'm going to talk about why I think I need to change the strategy of my prepping. And it's, it's going to be more of a probably have to, what do you want to call it, um, go deeper, so to speak. And, and the reason for that is because as preppers, we're always trying to f figure out, you know, what's the possible thing that might happen that we need to be prepared for. And I mean, that's just a mind numbing list of things. And even if we can fit that all in there, there's still more that we're not thinking about. But I saw a video the other day by Prepper Nurse, I think is his name. And he was talking about the Yellowstone volcano, the super volcano. And it was kind of scary as he was talking about it. So I decided I would go out and research what he was talking about. And in his video, he was talking about how there's uh, what they call a swarm of earthquakes up there in the past week or so. And activity in that, in that volcanic range is getting, uh, there's a lot more seismic activity, which is getting a lot of people worried about uh, Yellowstone blowing its top. And uh, if Yellowstone blows its top, it's going to be bad for a lot of reasons. And, he, you know, he was talking about a uh, nuclear winter um, lasting three years. I've seen reports where it could be like 10 years and it wouldn't and it would be global. Um, different things like that. So I started researching it. And what I ran across was and I've scripted some stuff out here. So if I'm looking over the sides because I'm I'm reading what I what I wrote out, but the first thing is that super volcano is a term that scientists use when they're talking to the layman, and, they're, and it's just their way of you know speaking science to us. They don't actually use super volcano in their writings in their in their work because they're. I mean, where's the line? When do you say super volcano and not? It's so they go by numbers and stuff like that uh, <clears throat> but the the the, uh, the concern right now is that there's a dramatic spike in seismic activity globally which is out of the norm and uh, this is quite al alarming considering what is going on at Yellowstone uh, there's been a swarm of earthquakes in the area registering up to 4.5 on the Richter scale and that one was felt by people there. So you've got seismic activity, which people don't feel. And then you've got stuff that grows higher until it actually becomes an earthquake that you feel. 
Great Scott, good morning or evening wherever you may be. Well, this is going into evening for me. So in my research, I found that most government and scientists research, research sites play down this swarm of earthquakes as something that happens on an infrequent but somewhat regular basis. And they say there's nothing to worry about. Now, on the other hand, other news and miscellaneous sites see these swarms of earthquakes as a precursor to Yellowstone blowing its top in a big catastrophic way. But here's the thing, they both cite, all of them, they all cite the same data and information to come to their conclusions. The problem lies in trying to determine who to believe. Who we got there? Prepared Cerberonite? Cerberonite, how you doing? You thought I would do this with my drone. That would be fun to do if I could. Uh, do it live at least. Okay, anyway, so we know that the government and scientific organizations like to downplay and in some cases upplay dangerous and hazardous events depending on how it will benefit them. And then the other types of sites that are calling for big eruptions are usually the ones hyping events up in order to get more eyeballs and viewership. So it's hard to know who to believe, uh, but like I said, uh, they both use and admit to the same data and information. So there's a clue. What is this data and information? Well, I've kind of boiled it down, so I'm not gonna get real technical, but I'll kind of go through uh, the stuff that I found. One, Yellowstone has erupted before, several times actually, and its eruptions are on a bit of a schedule. Apparently it erupts about every 600,000 years. And the last time was 640,000 years ago. So that means it's 40,000 years overdue. Uh, Yellowstone was a very seismically active area. Things are active underneath. The seismic activity has increased lately and has registered earthquakes reaching to 4.5 on the Richter scale. And that's back to that swarm of earthquakes I was talking about. And, um, and they say these swarms happen, you know, from time to time. And that's why you would hear the scientists say it's nothing to worry about. The problem is, is the swarms are getting more frequent and they're starting to, to actually uh, get up there to where people can feel them. They're sitting in their campground or you know, in nearby cities and feel it, the shaking. So that's kind of some of the data that, that boiled down. Now the threats from a Yellowstone eruption, and this is also the same stuff that both sides say, whether they're downplaying it or whether they're hyping it. Virtually the entire Northwest United States will be completely destroyed. Everything within a 100, 100 mile radius would be immediately killed. Volcanic ash would rain down for weeks. Anyone that breathed it in would die from suffocation because the ash would turn into a concrete like substance in their lungs. And it has been estimated. Hey FEMA, how you doing? I still don't have granite countertops in there yet. Anyways, it has been estimated that a full-blown eruption would dump a layer of volcanic ash at least 10 feet deep up to 1,000 miles away. Uh, food production in the United States would be almost totally wiped out. An eruption would result in a nuclear winter that would cool the planet up to 20 degrees. And I did say planet, and the nuclear winter has been estimated to last up to three years. I've seen some sites that say 10 years. So that sounds pretty nasty if you think about it. Just take a minute and go three years of winter, which means stuff would die off and uh, meaning people, animals, plants, because you don't have the seasons, you don't have the, the, the growing and then dying and then growing season again, so it would just die and stay dead. 
So whether the government is playing down the threat to keep people from panicking or news sites are playing it up just to get more eyeballs on their pages, we can see that there is a viable threat of eruption and the devastation would be horrific. Now, when Prepper Nurse was talking about this, he was really concerned that this swarm of earthquakes that they're registering up there right now and some of the signs are saying, man, it's, it, it could be kind of imminent, but nobody's talking about it. And I also sent, found a, a report where uh, one of the rivers that goes by there had spots that were boiling in it. <laughs> so that means that the, the magma is getting close. And, and the, the funny thing about it is this stuff isn't being reported, which you would think if there was something that was imminent danger to us all, you'd hear more reports about it in the news. But anyways, uh, to be perfectly honest, this kind of makes me rethink or change my, stra my prepping strategies. Um, not in a big way, but it's going to uh, change the strategy change my strategy I should say so let's think about first of all where I'm at I'm located about 1700 miles from the Yellowstone volcano so that puts me about 700 miles outside of the big ash layer you know the thousand mile ash layer uh, area and of course that doesn't mean that I won't still be affected by ash that will still uh, get a lot of ash in this area as well. Uh, but this also means that any survivors within the thousand mile radius that make their way out now become possible threats as they are looking for food and supplies. <laughs> yeah, BC, blow it all, all somewhere else, right? Not down here where we're at. My stream is down. It's showing a good health here. Let's see here. Let me let me double check. It's showing I have good health, but it is also showing that uh, I'm paused. Okay, well I'm going to keep going because I, I think what I'm watching is delayed. So maybe we're back up and running. So anyways, like I said, uh, any, any survivors that make it out of that thousand mile radius, they're gonna become possible threats because now they're looking for food and supplies. Now the extreme possibility of a three year nuclear winter is the worst case SHTF scenario. Food production will be virtually impossible without underground food growing facilities. In other words, underground bunker set up to run uh, grow lights, you know, everything that you can do underground to produce food. The problem is, is this is going to require power. Uh, and I'm not sure solar power will be a possibility. And I'm thinking of the winter like atmosphere uh, for a long time with ash in the air, you know, blocks out the sun. Obviously, if there's no sun coming down at all, the planet will com completely die. So if we continue we obviously got to have some sun coming there so if you put up solar you're going to have to put up so many just to draw enough power to, to run such an operation it's you know like grow lights and water pumps and stuff like that <clears throat> but three years of a nuclear winter winter will almost certainly mean wildlife will dwindle to the point of not being a viable source of food Human and animals both will fight for the last bite of anything, and there won't be much to fight for. Looks like it's... There we go. Looks like we're back. I wish I knew why it would do that, because I've got a really good connection. It shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so the trees and plants will die and much of the earth would become a wasteland. And that's just the three years. And like I said before, I've heard of 10 years 
and if, if it's going to be 10 years, we might as well just, uh, hey, Texas farmer, I'm back. Good, good. Uh, if it's 10 years, you might as well just, you know, put your head between your legs and pray that it's going to go quick. But this, my friends, would be worse than the myth mythical idea of a zombie apocalypse. At least in a zombie apocalypse, you still have your seasons and the ability to grow food. So how do you prepare for this? Well, it depends on where you're at. Obviously, areas further away from the, the initial blast, the further away you get, the better life is going to be if it could be good during a global uh nuclear winter and in that winter means that the temperature global temperature is going to drop about 20 degrees so in some places that you know are really hot it's just going to cool off which i don't know it might make it better for that area and places that stay cool are going to really be uh problematic but the problem is uh, we may be looking at a loss of seasons and that's why the growing is going to be growing your food will be a hard thing to do uh, so how do you prepare for that okay I've made a list and this is not comprehensive because it's just been a couple days since I saw a video and I've been thinking about it uh, but um, it is a beginning place for me Uh, what do we got here? Pets are not my peeve. Yeah, it was stuck, but finally came back up. Okay. I, did, if you lost me for four minutes, um, when it started back up, did it look like it just froze and then whatever I was saying continued? Or was there like a space of time that was lost about what I was talking about? And if that's so where do I go back and try to fix that redo that okay because I'm showing a good streaming health here right now okay well we will continue on from this point uh, our summer temps would drop to around 20 Celsius Yeah, and that's obviously going to change your environment. Uh, let's see, so to make this list, now this is the, my list, my not comprehensive list at the moment. It's just in its beginning stages. But to make the list, first I have to assume there will be no industry or marketplace to speak of, at least for me. Because remember, I'm only 700 miles outside the ash dead zone. So there will probably probably not be much happening especially considering the continuous uh, winter like conditions and all the people that fled out in the chaos that came from that hello 3d tripper so to start i would need a large enough cinder block bunker underground to hold enough stored food for three years and that's going on the hope that it only lasts for three years hopefully less uh, and this includes enough for any family as well and then if i want to grow underground then i would have to consider space for that as well um, and for all the solar required to run it and frankly i think uh, storing three years worth of food and heirloom heirloom seeds uh, for after the winter passes uh, so that you can start growing again is a much more attainable goal trying to build a compound that powers a vast growing operation is probably not something that i i could afford <laughs> uh, that would be humongous we got there uh froze and a circle spinny like reading was on the screen but seems it picked up where you dropped off good um is there an ash fallout map you can link us to there is uh, let me see if I can find it here. Um, and that's another thing, too, about those is I have seen a couple different 
Let me pull over here and see if I can pull something up. Uh, let's see. Modeling the asterisk distribution. Okay, let's see here. Okay, let's go and look at this. This one, ash fall boundaries for major eruptions for, from Long Valley Caldera Mount, St. Helens, and Yellowstone. St. Helens was up here. I remember that. I lived in Oregon at the time. Um, Yellowstone right here. And I think this is kind of based on the the uh, how it's going to flow uh, for the the wind, how the wind's going to blow it. But you can see now I'm I'm down here in Tennessee, so I'm just out of it. But anyway, let's see. It's in, in a nuclear winter, the ash would block out the sun, so I don't think solar will work too well. That's that's one of the things I was thinking. That if if you were able to get any solar, you'd have to have just tons and tons and tons of panels just to try to generate enough, just to get enough rays down there to, to uh, generate enough electricity. So I don't think it would be a viable option. So the better option is hope that it doesn't go longer than three years and store up three years worth of food. Uh, plus, I mean, figure out what you think you would need and then add to that because you got, uh, you don't know if it's going to last longer and then people tend to eat more uh, than you think or at least than the, the, what they need to. Uh, <clears throat> so back to the list. Okay. So I would have to be able to live in the bunker as well. So that will mean increasing the size and amenities. The solar requirements could be downsized to supply just enough power to run security cameras and lights and maybe charge batteries and stuff like that. Once again, I don't know how viable solar would be, but I guess it never hurts to have something set up just, just to hope, right? Just in case. Wind turbines. Yeah, there's another way. You can also set up... Uh, uh, electric electric uh, generating systems that you know run in a creek or in a, a spring or something like that you know on a powder wheel so that's another option if you're close to it now I'm all this that I'm talking about is based on the fact that I have land to go to I have land where I can dig into the side of the mountain and build this cinder block bunker that I'm talking about there's a lot of people that don't have that and man I just don't know I don't know how you would how you would uh, prepare without the place to do it okay back to the list uh, another thing you would need is plenty of weapons and ammo for protection and ammo will have to last well beyond the three years because who know who knows how long after the winter goes away you know, and whoever's left starts manufacturing stuff or whatever, you know, how, who knows how long it will take for something like that to happen. So you want to prepare and, and store enough for well beyond that. And in your weapons list, you really should include bows, uh, bows and arrows, and knives as well. So that's kind of the big stuff. But then you got to think about other things like toothpaste, toilet paper, soap, clothing, first aid items, water filtering equipment, um, food prepping items, all, all the different kinds of things that you, that you kind of use on a daily basis and uh, you don't, you know, you take for granted, you don't really think about it. Um, a lot of those things we already prep, but do we prep you know, three years worth. And things like, I mean, toilet paper, 
what do you do if you run out of toilet paper? Well, you got to think back to what, you know, what people did before the uh, creation, invention of toilet paper. BC, when I drilled my well, it hit water at eight feet. How did you know you were going to hit water at all? That's that's the question I always think about, and I know I just need to research that to figure it out. But BC, how did you know you were going to hit water there? And I'm waiting for your answer. <laughs> Probably will take a few minutes for you to actually hear me ask that question. Okay, so these are some items. Um, the partial non-comprehensive list that I've just began with. And part of the reason for doing the live is uh, getting your feedback. What other kinds of things do you think of? I've had some pretty good input already. Um, you know, kind of uh, like, like the solar. Yeah, you're confirming what I think that it was probably not going to be viable. There's other ways to do that. Uh, with the wind turbines um, and, and the water. Uh, what are the kinds of things that just in this little list that I've started with do you think I'm missing? You just knew that the water table is high everywhere you, I would drill. Well, let me ask you this. On my land, of course, I have a, a spring running right through it. Uh, but if I go up far enough, I can see where the water is just coming up out of the ground. There's there's little holes kind of all around this area where the water is just coming up out of the ground. And um, the guy, there's a guy that lives, oh, I don't know, probably two football fields away from me, that he's got a little pipe coming out of the ground that runs out to a little uh, ditch in the road there. And there's always water running out of that. And I asked him one day, uh, what, why that was there and he says it's actually overflow from uh, his, his well for some reason it, it overflows and that's where it goes but in that conversation he made a statement about the best water in Tennessee in the water that's there so can I assume from what you say BC that just about anywhere I would drill there I could actually get Oh, well, as long as I'm down low enough. That's what, that's kind of what I'm curious about. Witching is pretty easy. Has always found water for me. Uh, I watched a guy do that one time. He had the two copper wires bent like L's and walked along and, and uh, found water. And that's where we dug to, to uh, fix pipes and stuff. And Chris Reinhardt has property in East Tennessee for his bug out place. Yes, I almost got property in East Tennessee. That's another story, uh, a long story, and, but it didn't work out. But it would have been uh, a few more acres than what I have. It have been higher up in the mountains. It was just like in the, the foothills of the uh, Appalachian Mountains. But uh, it, it would have been fun. He has an artesian well. You may have that as well if it's just bubbling out of the ground. Well, see, that's what I was thinking. I, I was thinking it's, I mean, all you got to do is poke the hole and it's just going to come up, basically. Um, but I also realized that I could probably just go to where those are at and fashion some sort of pipe or something into those holes and start pulling it from there, I would assume. I could do that. And that's one of those things that I intend to get to at some point out on that land, but after I get the, the shack finished. Uh, how many folks will die? I expect way too many. Yeah, there's a lot of the stuff out there that you read that, um, spring heads, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there when I was doing the research that talked about, uh, you, you know, like the, the government sites would say, you know, don't worry, nobody's going to die from it. And then everybody else was saying, you know, it's going to take out 90% of the population of the earth. So there's one extreme to the other. You just don't know until it happens. 
and the biggest thing for me about this whole mess is it's it's either not a threat at all you know but if you look at the the records that they the history that they say it goes every 600,000 years which I don't know how they would know that but anyways they've they've cited the different time periods well it's been 640,000 years since the last time it blew so it's due it's overdue 40,000 years and they show all the calderas or cauldrons where it blew at one time and what those cauldrons or calderas are is when the magma expels it leaves a void in the in the the earth over top just falls in and then you have a hole or a bowl in the ground and so they track that and apparently if you look at a, an earth map there's a series of them that kind of go from where Yellowstone is and kind of snake down a little bit so you can see where and, and they they talk about it being uh, on this on a seismic trail or something like that but it's where platelets are moving and stuff and these things are happening uh, Evergo FEMA inmate asks Evergo metal detecting on my property I'm getting property soon never know what you'll find my wife bought a metal detector and went out a couple times and I think my father-in-law borrowed that metal detector and he's been out there a couple times I haven't myself personally done it and um, I don't remember what they found don't forget a good respirator ah, yeah that was something I needed to put in that list was uh, rest at least those uh, uh, you know like painters mask dust mask and stuff because you keep you're trying to keep out the ash but a respirator would be best and be stocked up on filters because those things need to be changed uh, frequently. Yeah, yep, N100 is 3 millimeter, uh, 3Ms. Set off Amazon for 35. Yep, yep. Um, and I don't know if, if you need two different respirators you know one for in case of actual nuclear uh fallout from a bomb or if you could use the same ones the patriot nurse has a good video on respirators i don't think i've seen that one and i usually see everything that she does and 3d tripper says thinking the ash will travel in the jet stream and per and cover all the south with deep ash springs and rivers waters may be bad everywhere yeah that's why one of the things I put in the list was good water filtering equipment um, and you can make water filters just from the stuff around you my fear is if there's a lot of ash it's gonna be hard to get uh, get the materials in good clean condition get the Israeli mask I haven't heard of that. What is that? I do not know. Think of the polar shift. Good question. I've kind of heard that before, but I haven't thought about it a whole lot. N100 covers it all, and it, and it came with six pairs of filters. All right, I'm going to have to look that up. Thanks, Knife Maker. I'm going to have to look that up. Let's see if we can look that up now. That would be, uh, let's see. In 100. Yep, right there. It's, all, it's right in the top of the. Let's take a look at that. Uh, 3M in respirators. We've got lots of different. Let's go look at the images and see what those shows us. Is this what you're talking about? Because I was thinking more of something like, like this. Right there. 3M half face reusable generator, medium each.
I don't know. There are a lot of things that we could uh, look at for that. Okay. It's got pink filters. The best mask out there and pretty cheap. Look at it on Amazon. On Amazon. Let's see if Amazon. I'm becoming less and less a fan of Amazon. Amazon but that's a whole political thing that we could get into let's uh, go there and see and let's look up thanks let's look up in 100 same thing um, yep 3m823 series And that would probably be the way to go. P100 half mask respirator. There's your pink filters. <laughs> well, that's another thing, you know, that, that, that I was going to put in that list and I forgot. Respirators that the fire department use must be really good. Don't know how easy they are to get a hold of. Great Scott, one trick we use to extend the life of filters while panel beating, spray painting was to fold a facial tissue and fasten it over the filter assembly with a rubber band. Collects the heavy particulates. Yeah, that makes sense. That would work. That would work. What else? What about uh, what else on that list do you think would be necessary? And uh, and I'm thinking in a bunker that you're going to be living in three years, and you you, you don't just want to survive, but you want to thrive. And that's a whole other topic that I've been thinking about too, uh, is not just surviving but thriving in whatever problem arises. <clears throat> um, you know, do you want to try to store, especially if you got kids, I mean, do you want to keep stored maybe some candy, you know, games for them to play? Or do you think that everybody's going to be so busy, you know, keeping things going and working that that stuff's not really going to be used? Um, my, my stepdad, he uh, would actually vacuum seal candy into um, uh, candy jars. And I, mean, I said, well, why are you doing that? And he says, you never know, you know, just, just because something's gone down doesn't mean that you can't, you know, have some treats for the kids once in a while or something like that. So that made sense. And that would help your, uh, your mental state, your morale, games, cards, yep. Um, 3M has a white paper on filter masks and volcanic ash. Can it leaks, but Google particulates filter volcanic volcanic ash. BC truck. I would have to store surgical instruments to remove my wife's. <laughs> Is she the only one you'd have to talk to? You might want to rethink that. Self-powered battery box. That'll be interesting to see if anything happens, to see if it would work. Uh, good eye protection is yeah. Eye protection is essential. Volcanic ash, from what I understand, has a lot of glass part particles in it. Yeah, the footwear. I, I guess you would consider that under the clothing part of the list. But you're right. You you would need something that's going to last for a while. Uh, you would probably need to have extra pairs sitting and waiting for when. <clears throat> the ones you're wearing now uh, you know wear out so there's a lot of things like that especially on that list um, especially on that list you would go like first aid or clothing then you would come down and start making a list you know of the things that you would need, you know, like extra shoes.
There we go. I don't know what I hit, but for some reason I stopped the stream. Weird. Okay. Google doesn't want us talking about preparedness. Yes, I know. And stuff like this, like going on YouTube, will probably uh, get banned from getting advertising. Who knows? Can, having candy would be good in case you run out of sugar. We need sugar to survive in that situation. Yeah. Um, you don't need a lot of sugar. You do. You do need. You do need some carbs. And what a doctor told me is that carbs in the body. Carbs is the only thing that the body will produce itself if it needs them. Which is really kind of amazing to me that uh and i assume it just takes from whatever you eat and produces the carbs if it needs it and that's why people try to eat as little carbs as possible because that's what puts on the weight hammer swinger yeah bc is sabotaging me he, he did that i don't know i maybe it was when i hit the s for shoes because the s tells my uh OBS to stream so that could have been what it was it's you hit the S to start streaming you hit the S to stop streaming but that's only supposed to work if I have that window forward so I don't know how that happened uh, hey ethical preparedness you're at work that's a bummer you're supposed to be home now but glad you could stop by at least Chris Reinhardt, I have a box built, holds 12 deep cycle batteries. New Pro, Pro Mariner 20 amp charger plugged into the inverter that is powered by the batteries and the charger will hopefully keep them charged. And what charger are you talking about? Is that from uh, some kind of wind power or what? <laughs> oh no, not back to the deliverance thing. My, that was my wife, by the way, that said that. Then I got a pretty mouth. So, I, I'm not offended if she says it. <laughs> Anybody else says it, though, I, I'm going to get a little concerned. <laughs> Whoops. I'm losing the right thing here. All right. Well... Um, that has been on my mind since I saw that. And I, that's why I went out and uh, no, it's electric plugged into the inverter. Huh, that's interesting. That's inter I gotta, I gotta cut, think about that. That's interesting. Anyway, uh, since I saw Prepper Nurse talk about it, I wanted to, I mean, obviously like after watching me, don't just go by what I say, but go out and research it. And that's what I did when Pepper Nurse talked about that. I wanted to go out and research it and see what everybody had to say. And obviously you're going out on the internet, so you don't know what you're gonna get on the internet. But the thing that I found interesting is that all the sites, whether they were governmental, scientific, news sites, or just your miscellaneous uh, preparedness, you know, Prepper, survivalist sites they all drew from the same data to give you their different uh, conclusions which tells me all right the data is pretty conclusive so now it's just up to me to decide hmm do I want to consider that and prepare for it or do I want to blow it off which some people say just blow it off because there's nothing to worry about uh, right now you're more concerned about the cascading effect of Illinois going belly up from BC truck uh, fill me in what are you talking about there stir fry ki ki kid I watched a Malcolm Douglas doco years ago he said when you go bush something sweet will be one of the first things you crave yeah the, the reason you the reason you crave that is because you're 
your body craves carbohydrates that's why so many of us get so out of shape because our body it like gets addicted to carbohydrates and so you you get hungry you think you're hungry but basically you're just wanting carbohydrates so now you go out and you get you know all the carbohydrate heavy things like breads and sugar sugary stuff um things like that when you go and you try to eat just nothing but vegetable like a vegetable dinner a vegetable diet people can't stick to it because they're craving those carbohydrates and it's not a like craving it because you need it it's a craving because your brain gets hooked to it just like it does to alcohol or you know tobacco or anything like that you get hooked to it and you want it but it doesn't have the stigma of tobacco and alcohol and cocaine and stuff like that so people don't most people don't realize that's what's going on they think they're hungry Ooh, bag of potato chips sounds good or a sandwich or a pizza but what they're doing is they're loading up with carbohydrates uh hey nordic there's a wikipedia article on volcanic gas it mentions this volcanic ash can erode pit and scour metallic apparatus particularly moving parts such as water and wind turbines yeah that's another thing and i'm glad you brought that up because it, i mean that's you got to think about the wear and tear over time you got to have enough uh, parts and pieces to repair these things uh, illinois has announced that they are broke and can't pay pensioners or road contractors so people are going to be coming down this way is what you think yes the earthquake spikes in yellowstone 3d, 3D tripper that is what they're calling the swarm a swarm of earthquakes and i guess they they when they have those they call them a swarm and they happen all over the place. And in the last swarm they had, some of them got up to like 4.5 on the Richter scale, which people could feel. So that's getting pretty hefty. I can't be offline again. Come on. There we go. Yeah, still going. I don't know what's causing that, but we're going to have to fix it or figure out what it is. But I have a really good connection with my uh, cable. So I don't know if it's uh, software or on YouTube side or what. But I'm back. All right. With that, I think I've been on long enough. I do appreciate everybody coming by. Um, I think I will add to this list and probably in the future have more videos on my thoughts and what I'm doing and if I get to the point where I can start digging in that that bunker that's gonna make for some good video too out at the out at the land so yeah I'm back in I'm just fixing to be gone again but I do appreciate everybody stopping by and uh, I'm going to get out of here and um, probably have some dinner uh, if Illinois goes broke, what does that mean for the rest of the states? I think maybe I'll hang around to see the answer. And I'm hoping BC Truck will answer that. Let's see. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. You're all, you, you, it's, it's in your ball, it's in your court, BC. <laughs> We're waiting. Great Scott, back on but missed the comment about my sweet comment. Your sweet comment was about the body being, your mind gets addicted to carbohydrates, which comes from sweets. The glycemic index is where all that stuff registers. Um, thank you, pets are not my peeve. Uh, you too. But what that means is, you think you're hungry, but your body's actually, your mind's just telling you that you want the carbohydrates. So that's why people get, love pizza, sandwiches, you know, bready things, weedy things, potato chips, sweet things like candies and stuff like that. And uh, carbohydrates are like, like tobacco and alcohol and cocaine. It, it, that's the addiction. You're not really hungry. You're not really missing anything. You're actually just up. Uh, 
you, you're actually just wanting the carbohydrates. So that was the gist of the comment. They are suggesting the surrounding states absorb Illinois. Yeah. Hopefully they won't come down this far, but we're not that far away either. That in in Illinois, you know, I don't. The political culture up there is not one that I prefer to be coming my way. I heard about that. They stop. They stop paying the lot of winners. Uh, that's not good. Why would people? play then if they quit paying it <laughs> oh well anyway uh thank you very much if you guys miss this and you want to know what we talked about just go back and watch it uh when it comes up on into my feed as a done video and i'm going to try to figure out why this thing is freezing i, I my suspicions are it's not on my end it's on on uh youtube's end because everything running here is i've got huge comcast uh uh cable that's a very high speed uh this computer is it's decked out with everything so it's built for gaming which is very and uh, where i edit so it's uh it can handle all this stuff easily so i don't know what it is check with volcanic ash on wikipedia tons of info there on all kinds of aspects technical health etc all right well, everybody, thank you very much. I'm going to get out of here. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.